welcome back to Cuckoo for Books. My name is Salva and today I'm gonna be doing another favorites and wrap up for the month of February. Look, I have a shelf. I have a beautiful shelf now, guys, which I assembled, yes, all by myself. Thank you for your virtual applause. So I got these shelves, which are not yet mounted to the wall, thereby posing an imminent risk to my life. So if the shelf falls over whilst I'm filming this video, this will inevitably my, be my goodbye video. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Maybe this shelf is my first favorite of the month. But first, we're actually gonna go to the wrap up. So the first book I read this month was Roseblood by A.G. Howard, and it is a retelling of the Phantom of the Opera books. It is not a books. <laughs> It's of the Phantom of the Opera movie, musical, and novel. As much as I wish I could say I love the book and I really, really wanted to love it because Phantom of the Opera, who doesn't love that? The cover is gorgeous. I wasn't a fan of the style of writing of the author. I felt like she had built this beautiful mythology and world and yet chose to focus on other things. It was one of those books. It seems like it's a standalone, even if it were a series, I don't think I'd be reading the next novel. I think that the author's note at the end of the novel definitely made me appreciate the novel a bit more, but then it was just a case of too little, too late. It's a shame that the author had to explain to me the reason behind her world building and that was the only way I was able to appreciate it. The second book I read was an ebook and it was my first romance class novel of the year and it was Prep and Prejudice by Marin B. Flores. What I didn't expect at all was how much the book made me miss home. A lot of the book is set at the beach and I was just freezing my butt off here. As someone who has never read Pride and Prejudice, I'd like to say it's a retelling or draws elements from Pride and Prejudice. It's a story basically about a girl who grew up with the privileged elite of Manila who was never one of them and now that she's older she reunites with some of her old people from the past and that's all I can say without giving away spoilers. I thought it surpassed my expectations. I thought there was no way the author was going to be able to make this character redeemable and she did and I was pleasantly surprised by the fact that she was able to pull it off. The last book I read for the month of February. Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. I am so glad I was finally able to read this novel. The fact that it's set in LA, which is where I just moved and am just starting to get to know, just made it the experience of reading it so much cooler. I finished this a few days into March. If February had 31 days, I would have finished this and wrapped it up in February. This is my channel and I get to say what goes into the wrap up and what doesn't. And I say, because I didn't want to have two books in my wrap up that were including Lady Midnight. I was very comfortable with settling back into the world. Also, a huge plot element is the poem Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe, which is one of my favorite poems, if not my favorite poem of all time. I'll be doing a more complete, more in-depth review soon. And now, for my favorite. First favorite I had this month was the TV show The Good Place. The Good Place is a TV show starring Kristen Bell and it's essentially a TV show about a girl who ends up in The Good Place or a heaven of sorts and then she realized that she was actually meant for The Bad Place and it's a mini series. There's only 13 episodes, 20 minute episodes so you can finish it just like that. It's so enjoyable. The second favorite I had and Oh, I'm gonna do makeup now. Oh my gosh, me makeup. Ugh. I think I'd be very mean if I, <laughs> mean to myself, mean to the lipstick, mean to the makeup. Who am I being mean to? But I think I would be lying if I said this wasn't a big part of my February. <laughs> Makes me sound pathetic. How does a beauty person do this? Oh, okay. It's the Revlon Ultra HD Matte Lip Color in the shade Forever. And I personally like wearing lipstick at school, but obviously I don't have time every day to put on a vibrant color and just like make sure everything's in place and there are no smudges. This is like, I think a perfect shade. I believe the beauty gurus call it my lips but better or your MLBB shade. So I think I finally found it. This is my MLBB shade. Next favorite is the musical by Stephen Sondheim, Assassin. So my school theater organization staged a production of Assassins and I volunteered to be assistant stage manager so that was like day in day out for like three weeks 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. listening to the soundtrack what I was surprised by was that I didn't get sick I wasn't like oh my god this song I was like every day I'd be like yay we get to sing along to this song again this is so fun next favorite would be a very nice favorite and I don't know how to get it up here all the way onto the camera but it is this beautiful 
purple blanket. It's been with me through the shivering night. Another favorite I have is this little thing. It's a perfume bottle. It's not even a bottle. It's plastic and this is the Toca Stella and it just smells like something I remember smelling while traveling abroad and I loved it and it was also, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm gonna have the opportunity to squeeze Tamora Pierce in. I was reading a Tamora Pierce novel during my first trip to London. It might have been something my mom was wearing as perfume or like a lotion, but it just has that nostalgic smell and so when I found it, I was like, spray that all over myself. I'm gonna smell like London. Second to the last favorite are these little puppies. They are Blue Jolly Ranchers! I don't know why I made a mess like that. I'm just gonna have to clean that up later. During rehearsals of Assassins and during the show's run, it would be late at night, sometimes I'd be super tired, but I'm not on that caffeine train. If I tried drinking caffeine, I would die and have panic attacks. So I needed something else to keep me peppy and boosted and nice and hyper and peppy and ready to work. And so I reached for my stash of Blue Jolly Ranchers. My last favorite would be Kate Middleton, which is such a random favorite. It's so weird and I can't explain it, but there's just something so chill and calming about Pinteresting her and like seeing all her cute little outfits and coats and little fascinators and gowns and just looking at her, looking all perfect. I would never pin anything or make boards. I would just like look at Kate Middleton blue gowns, or Kate Middleton in coats, or Kate Middleton's hats, and I would just like weirdly find that calming and relaxing. And I think it's because she looks so put together that it inspires me to get my stuff together. And that about does it for my February wrap up and favorites. You can follow me on my other bookish adventures on Twitter and Instagram, both at cuckoo for books. Please subscribe, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye, guys.